Welcome back, Hi Rights YouTube. Uh, today, video about concurrent futures. Uh, I don't use async that much other than in frameworks like Fast API, but there's one really cool snippet. It's also a PyBytes tip that I use over and over again. Um, well, not maybe over and over again. I have used a couple of times and our clients as well. And uh, that snippet of the concurrent futures library has tremendously sped up some code. So let's uh, dive into it. So here I'm at my terminal, I already made um, a repository. I already made a virtual environment and I even have some starter code because your time is precious and I want to just get to the point quickly. So I made a download.py um, installed request. And um, what I want to do is grab all the URLs from our articles API endpoint. So this endpoint looks like this, and um, you can verify that this works by um, searching for title, and there are 280 articles. We uh, started this API, or exposed this data, by the way, because our RSS feed only shows the last 10 articles, but uh, we want to see all of them. And uh, happy to say we already have 280 entries on the blog. So uh, this little get links function, um, does a request that get to that URL and does a little list comprehension to um, filter out the links. And then um, if I call it directly, then if name equals main block enters and it writes us to a links um, flat text file. By the way, um, for a long time, I, I would just do this. To write uh, files and that's perfectly fine. But uh, the path lib, half object actually has um, read text, read bytes, write text, write bytes methods uh, that can do that as well. So that's a nice abstraction. Um, so I get all the links and I join them together by new line and um, close it off in an extra new line as well. So if I run this code, a new links file gets generated that uh, has all these links, right? And why am I connecting the links? Well, going back to concurrent features um, library. So it's um, a module that provides a high level interface for asynchronously executing callables. And you can go either, either the thread route or you can go the process route. And I'm going to go the thread route. Now, what's really nice about this documentation page is that it comes with a specific example. So uh, let's copy that into a script file. I think I had a demo file already that might be useful because there's also some starter code here. I will explain in a second. Um, I don't need this exception handling per se, and I'm just going to commend it for now because first I want to show how slow or fast things can be when we run them uh, synchronously, so sequentially. Again, I have some starting code, the imports. I um, read the links text file into a URLs constant, uh, the, the file we just created. I reference a downloads directory, again, using a pathlib, uh, more modern. I specify some headers uh, to for this to actually work. I will get back to that in a second. And I have a download URL function that takes a URL, uses request get uh, with the headers, um, so let me actually explain those. Uh, so when I was preparing, just calling a plain request get to the URL would uh, fail. It got like method not allowed. So this headers trick is a little bit to, um, to show the API uh, pretending that I'm a web browser or doing a web request. Um, let me actually uh, test it without it and then we'll so soon see what, what kind of issue that gave me. Might um, think that's useful. So let's uh, keep it like that. And then um, these URLs, um, as we saw in links, if you look at uh, links, um, URLs are like this. So what this line does, keeping this in mind, is stripping off the last trailing slash, then splits it by slash. So you get like uh, different parts, and then it takes the last one. So if I split it by slash, I end up with a list that has all these components. 
And then I just picked the last one doing negative indexing. So you end up with something like this. And that to me is reasonable file name, right? And I call it file name. Then I create a path by concatenating that um, using um, operator overloading to um, to make a full path. And then I write the response text that responses here uh, to that file. Now let's uh, do that concurrently. Let's take away this boilerplate code. And let's also just do it for um, 10 URLs to not be waiting for a very long time. So for URL in URLs, and then call download URL URL. And I will show a time it decorator soon, but for now, just let's use just the Unix time utility to, uh, to time this. And that takes about 5.5 .5 seconds and the downloads directory has some content in there. But yeah, actually um, going back to that headers thing, if I look at the content, it says uh, not acceptable. Uh, appropriate representation of the request resource could not be found on the server. And that's basically um, because I need to make the request as if I was a web browser. There might be a more elegant way to do it, but a quick search and Stack Overflow thread gave me this sample. So I'm going to put this back. I'm also going to remove what's in downloads to have a clean start. And then I'm going to run it again. Takes even a bit longer, 14 seconds. Um, but I got my content, right? So uh, this is now, uh, apart from a bunch of JavaScript, it, it should have the content of that article, okay? So let's do the same thing, but now asynchronously using concurrent features. I'm going to wipe this out and uncomment this. And yeah, the nice thing about the documentation example that it should work pretty well out of the box. So I just need to change this callable to my function. On the URL. I pass in the argument URL. I'm not passing in any other arguments for now. I think that was a timeout. So again, I'm going to clean out what I had before. Doesn't really matter because it would override it, but just to make a clean start. And again, I removed the synchronous version. I'm now using the asynchronous version. So let's see how that goes. And that's just 2.5 seconds. So that's pretty awesome. Um, before we had 14 seconds, we had 5.5. .5, so say that's an average of 10 seconds on the previous two synchronous runs. Now asynchronously, we have 2.5. That's a 4x speed up. So uh, that's pretty cool. Of course, use this responsibly. You're going to make many more requests to a certain website. And of course, you should um, see if that's cool with the owner. But yeah, um, again, people have used this and have reported significant speed um, gains. And I think it's a, a really good tip to have in your toolbox. So um, you can just use this template from the documentation. You also have it in a PyBytes tip and you only need to uh, replace the callable here in the executor.submit. Anyways, that was a, a quick demo of concurrent futures and how it can speed up uh, doing things asynchronous way. Hope you uh, will adopt the uh, trick, add it to your toolbox, and that's it. Uh, hope this is helpful, and uh, see you in the next video.